In this video, I'm going to explain how an intruder alarm would appear within Wingard. The first thing that draws the attention is the red graphic at the top of the screen. These red panels indicate the areas that are set within the intruder panel. You can also see within the top of the graphic the red flashing icons. This indicates which area has been breached to set the intruder panel off and therefore create an alarm within Wingard. Down here below the graphic you'll also notice that we have some quick buttons. These can be configurable but in this instance they allow us to set and unset different areas of the panel or different zones within the intruder system. These can also allow us to set the complete building but this may be based on day or nighttime settings and this may be in an instance where this isn't required to be scheduled. Within the graphic you'll also notice the green camera. The green camera is the camera that is currently selected. This would highlight that this camera has cause and effect scenario built in and is set to actually either show within the video within the client system or the video within the monitor wall which will also give the, give the operator an idea as to the situation and what is happening and give them a clear picture before they take any action. You'll see that down at the bottom here, the intruder panel is showing it's a higher priority alarm and it's shown with its location, the data point name, the end point name, along with the alarm type. If the operator selects accept, you'll see just above in the event log that that is accepted and assigned to a user. Across on the right, you'll see the dynamic workflows. This is where the standard operating procedures of the organisation are taken in and digitised in order for the operator to take the relevant actions. At the top we can see it's an intrusion alarm and we can also see a series of static data. This static data just allows us to understand where the alarm has taken place, which, the se which sensor has uh, become alarmed and also the type of alarm that's um, been sent to the system. We also have a date, time and below a priority to give us the information we need. This is what we would refer to as static data. Below that we have what we would call dynamic data. Dynamic data is based much more around the standard operating procedures. So for example here we can click on the camera feed to see what is happening and the camera will be launched within Wingard. We can then simply click on the button, check the camera feed and this will give us an indication as to whether there is intruder activity or not. This video could, would also be shown potentially as part of a cause and effect, as I said previously, on a monitor wall. So we've checked the camera feed, and now, as part of this, we may need to send some security staff to the location. So doing this, we could use maybe a radio interface or a SIP interface, but in this instance, we're just simply using a telephone. Is intrusion determinable? And if it is, then we can click on yes. If the answer was no, you will see that the workflow completely changes using the dynamic evaluation within Wingard. In this instance, yes, it is an intruder and we can see them on site. So we're going to call the police again using a SIP interface would be possible. We can call reinforcements via the radio interface and the next action is for us to lock the doors down. So this may be locking down areas within the building to ensure that the intruders can go no further. So by clicking this button, we initiate a series of events that you'll see down in the event log, which has now said door two block. That means that door two has now been locked via the access control system via the integrations. We need to keep the floor plan open and ready for when the police arrive or print out a copy. And we also now need to call the key holder, Mr. Miller. So we do that again using a SIP interface, which could be with an Avaya or a Cisco system and we would call Mr. Miller and ask him to attend site. Once we're happy that everything is completed and countermeasures are finished, then we can reset the detector, provide an alarm reason. In this instance, we'll say it's a staff member that calls the alarm, um, but it could be a list of anything and these dropdowns are fully able to be populated by the customer. We also have the option to enter some free text if required, but in this instance, we won't. We'll simply create a report we can then potentially export some video if required. In this instance, we don't need to, so we'll create the report, which we have all of the static data from the event. We have all of the log data showing all of the actions taken by the operator. And as we move down, you'll see a copy of the graphics as we left them at the end of the event. If there was any attachment of video or still images, then that would be, they would be also shown at the bottom of the report. 
So we've exported the video, we've generated a report and we can also send a report to our supervisor. And as we can see, all steps have now been taken. So all that remains is for the operator to click complete. And that is the end of the incident.